Now I'm going to talk you through the general flow of all stoichiometry problems that you'll ever do. Um, it does say this here, I can't stress this enough, to use your labels and units. I know it takes a little bit extra time to write the words moles of NH3 and moles of O2 up there, but if you don't write those labels in, um, number one, you're going to lose some points on quizzes and tests that you take, but number two, you're way more likely to get wrong answers because you'll accidentally flip these conversion factors upside down or skip a step or something like that. So. Honestly, the more you label and write down, you know, the better your grades will be for multiple reasons. So here's the general flow chart for every single stoichiometry problem you're ever going to get. And you actually already know how to do a big part of these problems from when we did our mole chapter earlier in the year. Both the beginning and the end of stoichiometry problems are just like the mole problems we did earlier in the year. So for example, um, you might start with some chemical A, and they might give you that amount in particles. And you might remember how we said earlier that particles, that's any itty bitty little thing. So they might be talking about atoms or molecules, formula units. Now, if you wanted to get those particles into moles to get from here to here, you would need to use that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number. Well, what if the amount that they gave you was in liters? Well, assuming that it's a gas at STP, no tricks. If it is, you would need the number 22.4 to get you from here to here. What if they gave you the amount of the, your substance of chemical A in grams? Well, in order to get from grams to moles, the way you do that is by using the molar mass on the periodic table. So the first part of a stoic problem, if we chop it here, those are the mole problems that you've already done. Now, the end of a stoichiometry problem is also stuff that you already know how to do because that's just starting with the moles and going to some amount. So you might be ending with some kind of particle or liter or gram. And you're going to use the same conversion factors as we do over here. They would just be flipped upside down because you'd be starting with moles instead of starting with one of these units. The only new piece for a stoichiometry problem is this arrow in the middle to get from moles of one chemical to moles of another chemical. And to do that, that's where you're going to use the mole ratios in your balanced equation as one more conversion factor to get you from one chemical to another. Just like this 4 to 5 ratio here, we got that from the 4 to 5 ratio in our balanced equation.